What would happen to UK science in the case of a Brexit? We know nothing good and that it will be complex. So the first issue we have to deal with is a claim, which is that there would be no change at all in our participation on the EU science programme. Reason being that there are non-EU countries at the moment, like Switzerland and Norway, that buy into the EU science programme from outside, so we could just do the same. And we get this messaged at us and tweeted at us all the time. Here's one uh, from a couple of days ago. Franny8342 says... With Brexit, EU still exists. So clearly, we just pay money to rejoin their scheme. Full stop. No brainer. Well, Franny8342, it is actually a little bit of a brainer because if we were to leave the EU, then in order to rejoin their science programme, it would not be an automatic entitlement. It's something that needs to be negotiated. And there are various factors that influence our ability to participate in it. The most important one being immigration. Now, in February 2014, the Swiss had a referendum on immigration where they voted by just 0.6% of the population that they wanted to restrict immigration, to have quotas and to preferentially give jobs to the Swiss over EU migrants. This put them foul of various bilateral agreements that they had with the EU and it meant for their science program there were parts that relate to free movement of people that they weren't allowed into and this caused them endless headaches and, and, and a lot of money replicating schemes. This is a clear warning for the UK because if um, our Brexit campaign is largely driven by those who want to restrict EU immigration, then after Brexit, were that to happen, we would be in a similar situation to the Swiss. There is another reason why we won't be able to continue as we are now, even if we had freedom of movement, and that is the relative success that we have on the current EU science programme. So even though the UK is 11 to 12% of the, of the population of the EU overall, nevertheless, we win about 16% of the funds back. Now, if we were outside and trying to buy back in, this makes things a bit awkward, seeing as we actually win more funds than anyone else at the moment. It's okay at the moment because, hey, we're a net contributor to the EU budget. And so, you know, our money is going in to help build up Europe overall. And But were we to be outside, a lot of the Eastern European countries might say, well, you know, who's, who's letting these people outside the EU dominate our programme when we want our own scientists to be getting more of the prestigious ERC grants, participate in more of the multinational collaborations and so forth and so on. So you can see some of the difficulties there. Another difficulty is that if we are outside rather than being in, in terms of setting policy, well, then it makes things a lot harder, doesn't it? So generally, the policy would be set by the EU and then would have to buy into the programme afterwards. And finally, do not underestimate the importance of the EU workforce within our science community. British science is great, not just because of British scientists, but because of all scientists in Britain. And foreign scientists in the UK have told me that in the case of a Brexit, given everything that's being said about EU migrants at the moment, um, a Brexit would certainly make, in their eyes, the UK a less attractive place to come and do science. So I can go into all of these issues in more detail later, but that's an overview of where we see the threats to UK science from a Brexit. Please do drop comments below and also subscribe for more. Thanks very much.